on Spotlight, your penny keeps on rolling. Check out how the penny sales tax continues to improve district schools. Lots of lip service at one local high school. See how the stars aligned at Seminole Ridge. Does helping your child with homework give you a headache? We have tips on how to subtract stress and add fun to the equation. Hi everyone, I'm Rick Blackwell. And I'm Claudia Shea. Welcome to Spotlight on Education. Okay, we begin today with a look at some important upgrades in our schools. The penny sales tax referendum approved by voters last fall is being used for all sorts of upgrades on campuses and to update the district's transportation fleet. And now it's also funding the installation of audio equipment. Classroom amplification systems are being used now. This project replaces obsolete or broken equipment and microphones so that all students can hear the lesson. You know, we often hear that there's no substitute for a good book. And now students throughout the district have even more good books within their reach. That's right, and it's all thanks to a business partnership designed to celebrate literacy. What's Mount Rushmore, anybody know? In celebration of Celebrate Literacy Week, we have books that are being donated by our wonderful partners of Barnes & Noble. This will really support our goals for literacy for our students, especially engagement, because what kid doesn't love having a high interest, fun book to read? Which book is that? That's I had this great opportunity to be able to show some of the books to some of the kids here at Lantana Elementary. Um, it was so wonderful. I loved the opportunity to really interact with the students and we talked a lot about the different types of books that we found and some of my favorites that I was able to share with them. Over 6,200 students are receiving free books through the holiday drive from Barnes & Noble that they ran last fall up through the holiday season. Barnes & Noble is all about putting a book in everyone's hands, especially students. So us being partners with the school district really gives us the opportunity to collect thousands of books and deliver them to schools all over the district. The district's goal is to really enhance students on level grade level reading um, by third grade. So we're really um, pushing and encouraging students and teachers to assist students to uh, learn more about reading and all the processes that it takes. Our students love books, so they are super excited to have this opportunity to have more books in their hands. Thank you, Barnaby. At this young age, we just want that joy to be able to be part of their reading process. And I think that Barnes & Noble helping us today really helps us to be able to accomplish that. Students who attend Odyssey Middle School are preparing for a big change. This after the school board approved a boundary change. Next school year, Odyssey students will instead be assigned to Carver, Krista McAuliffe, Congress, Lantana, and Woodlands Middle Schools. Meanwhile, Odyssey will be repurposed as South Tech Academy. That decision was based on an enrollment projection and other demographics. Bright students competing under the bright lights here at the Education Network. These kids are smart. Here at 10, we hosted the annual Academic Challenge, which featured competitors from 20 Palm Beach County high schools, each team represented by four students who try to answer questions in subject areas that include math, science, language arts, and social studies. New this year, moderators from inside the school district who asked the very difficult questions. Question. Identify the author of the following quotation. All happy families are alike. Each Team five, Suncoast High School. Tolstoy? That is correct, it is Tolstoy. Seven teams moved on to the finals. Once again, you can see the academic challenge right here on the Education Network. More smart students at Eagles Landing Middle School for a speech and debate competition. I believe students should, be, should use self-defense as a justification in public schools. Chloe Greenbaum from Eagles Landing, one of the many students involved in the event. Chloe competes in Congress, which requires students to take positions on important issues. More than 100 students took part in events like dramatic interpretation, original oratory, and public forum. There are a lot of benefits to speech and debate. In the age of texting and Twitter, it seems that many kids are lacking in communication skills. In speech and debate, we try and teach children how to speak in public and personally, and that gives them a decided advantage over their peers who have to resort to simply texting or Twittering. Judges rate the students on their poise, presentation, and the content of their speeches. In the end, the students compete for trophies, ribbons, and of course, bragging rights. 
Homework is part of every student's life, and getting into a good routine early will help throughout a child's entire academic career. Absolutely, and in today's Parent University series, Trisha Shervin shows us five simple strategies for handling homework in elementary school. Elementary school is an exciting time in a child's life, filled with new friends, new experiences, and new responsibilities, including homework. Homework starts in kindergarten. As soon as they come to school with us, they're going to be receiving homework. And it's really important that parents allow for that. Five strategies can help families navigate homework. The first, make time and have a place. There should be a designated time and space for homework in the house, a, time, a place that's clean and ready for students. Students should have some basic supplies at home, crayons, pencils, those kinds of things in order to complete their homework. Strategy number two, allow students to complete homework independently. Guide and assist without giving them the answers. Let the students struggle. It's what we call a productive struggle. Students have to experience not succeeding immediately at things. It's part of growing as a learner. Strategy three, ask about homework and make sure it gets back to school. Okay, Lily and Gus, can we look at your agendas? You really want to be following up, particularly with your elementary school students, to make sure that they're getting in the habit of completing homework and getting it turned in the following day. Strategy four, remember homework is a shared responsibility between the teacher, the parent, and the student. It's a gradual release kind of process. You set up the time, you set up the expectation, you ask questions to follow up with your student, but you let your student do their part as well. A final strategy for homework in elementary school, maintain a growth mindset and ensure students are showing progress no matter where they start academically. And this actually with my own children was something that I really had to learn. Uh, it's the idea that you're praising students because they're working hard, because they're putting forth good effort, rather than telling them that they're smart. Following these five strategies will help build a strong foundation for achievement throughout their entire academic career. Okay, Rick. Have you downloaded the school district's new mobile app? I can honestly say I have. Students in the class of 2030, they're sharing their top five reasons to get the app. Here are the top five reasons you need to get the download. You can find out about all the school news. The new app gives you up-to-date school bus routes and times. School lunch menus. Wow, Fiesta Pizza? You can look at the school calendar. Number five, all those above, plus many more. So much information about your child's education right at your fingertips. Anywhere, anytime. Nothing better than the Palm Beach County app. Time now to recognize students and staff making a difference across the district. In this week's Honor Roll, award-winning moves, two dance students from Dreyfus School of the Arts placed in the Youth Grand Prix 2018 dance competition. Congratulations to Evan Corbel and Dylan Amsterdam. The Jupiter FFA had a great showing at the South Florida Fair. The group set up two horticulture displays and won $250 from the fair for their efforts. The Jupiter FFA was also involved in many other events. And congratulations to Alamanda Elementary's Deborah Feinsinger. This teacher and health and wellness coordinator was selected as one of 12 Healthy School Hero Award winners from Action for Healthy Kids. Way to go, Debbie. Our next shout out goes to students and staff who helped the district reach a milestone, a 90% graduation rate for the class of 2017. And best of all, there's evidence that we're making real inroads in closing the achievement gap. Take a look. Hats off to the School District of Palm Beach County. Its graduation rate for the class of 2017 reaching an historic 90% as our district continues to rank first among Florida's large urban districts. And the achievement gap continues to close. For Hispanic students, the graduation rate is up by 6.6% over the past two years. I came to this country in 2004 from Mexico. We are fortunate to live in a country where everything is possible, where we have freedoms and rights, where girls can get PhDs, doctorates, become doctors, lawyers, and one day presidents. 
Graduation is one of the long-term goals of the district's five-year strategic plan. The board hoped to reach a 90% graduation rate by 2021, a goal now realized three years early. Everything is possible. If you put your mind to it, you can do anything you choose to do. The School District of Palm Beach County, your best choice. And another outstanding effort involving high school students to tell you about. Students at Seminole Ridge recently continued their annual tradition of creating an outstanding lip dub highlighting their school. Student reporter Anna Fontecchio joins us now with more on that. Hi, Anna. Hi, Rick and Claudia. It's business here as usual at Seminole Ridge. Quite a different scene from a couple days ago when this was the scene of our annual lip dub. All right, so this is Seminole Ridge, your new school. So what do you think? It looks nice, but what's there to do here? I'm sure there's a lot of stuff you can do here. Hey, ha have fun. I'll try. Don't worry about it, we'll show you around. You're gonna love it here. Make them way downtown. The theme of this year's dub was portraying what Seminole Ridge has to offer students. From sports, to honor societies, to the school band, and academies. All took part. There's so much to do on this campus. And, as you can see, school pride runs really high. Hundreds of students and teachers behind the scenes helped make this happen. The TV Academy here at Seminole Ridge helped the Student Government Association put this all together. A student even incorporated his very own rap song about the school into the lip dub. Chick-fil-A. AP. Miss Boutte. This entire lip dub was planned in less than three weeks. Impressive when you take into account all of the choreography involved. Even Principal James Campbell took part in a truck in the school's automotive academy. If you'd like to see the entire lip dub, visit the Seminole Ridge TV Academy website at youtube.com slash user slash WSRH News 3. Rick and Claudia, back to you. Thanks, Anna. What a great job. That was incredible. Incredible. Great work by everybody at Seminole Ridge. You know, credit goes to a local company for making a generous donation to one of our schools. The technology company LexisNexis recognizes the value of robotics and is supporting the robotics club at Boca Raton Community Middle School. We're working on a project under the hydrodynamics category. My robot is a rover that we took from the manual. Robotics Club is uh, something we started in, in elementary school. Um, I got to be lucky enough to come to Boca Middle and bring the program here along with us. It's a, a, a great program where the kids get to apply uh, real world uh, technology um, and get to build things um, that they can only think of before. One of our wonderful parents wanted to help out the school and he works for a global company, LexisNexis, that um, has a program where they would like to contribute to schools and contribute to education. As a technology company, we recognize that robotics is, uh, is, is where it's at. On behalf of LexisNexis Risk Solutions, we are pleased to donate this check in the amount of $17,291 to the Boca Raton Community Middle School Robotics Club. These funds are gonna go very far. You can buy a lot of robotics packs. Anything that we can get to help us out is going to be extremely beneficial for us. To be able to come in and do things and see now that LexisNexis, a company that we give to the community, comes in and actually will make things possible for a lot of students like myself when I was younger who really love science. For them to be able to be willing to help out a public school uh, and take uh, a, a bunch of kids that are you know, using technology in a fun way um, and taking it to the next level. It's so important for us at the school level to have uh, businesses and companies within the community, parents who are involved. Um, there's so many things that we're able to do as a school having those people in the community. Bridging our technology and our ability to give back into the community, it was just a perfect fit. Even surrounded by pizza, fried cheese, and corn dogs, Palm Beach County school students made some really helpful choices at the South Florida Fair. We're going to tell you about the event that had kids running down the midway.
Watch the Education Network on Comcast Channel 234 and AT&T UVerse Channel 99, keeping you informed. They are some of the youngest news anchors in the nation. Talented kids who make up the Lighthouse Elementary School Morning News Team. Addison. Ben. Catherine. Anara. India. Logan. Neil. The second graders deliver a top-notch newscast every day at 8.05 a.m. The show includes the Pledge of Allegiance, the National Anthem, school news, the lunch menu, Aunt's Potato Smiles, even a principal's message. Good morning, boys and girls. Good morning, teachers. Lighthouse Elementary School principal Julie Hopkins is impressed with her fellow newscasters. The students are learning how to be their best as readers and uh, presenters, and I think that ties right into the strategic plan with being able to read by third grade. There is a lot of reading on a teleprompter controlled by one of the students. The so, second graders also work setting audio levels and with computers which turn the green screen into a virtual TV news set. They're amazing. No matter where you set the bar, they step up and do a great job with it. Lighthouse Elementary relies on second graders because they're the oldest students in the school that goes kindergarten through second. The students have made big gains since the start of the school year. Because I didn't really know all of the words, so but now I understand the words better, and I could um, say I could pronounce them better. Students making big improvements with their reading. Now that sounds like a top story. And then I'm gonna pick up speed and fly. Positive words recited by more than 2,400 Palm Beach County school students at the South Florida Fairgrounds. Runners at the 2018 Kids Mile come from 38 area schools like Marsh Point, Acreage Ponds, Cypress Trails, and Elbridge Gale Elementary Schools. Three, two, one, go! The participants race down the midway of the South Florida Fair, past the food vendors, no time for a turkey leg. Taking a ride on the Ferris wheel would have to wait. Volunteers from Palm Beach County High Schools keep the kids on course. The only spectators, some of the animals at the fair. These competitors are in great shape thanks to the running clubs, in physical education classes at their schools. Running is an individual sport, but check out the teamwork to get this fifth grader with a broken leg over the finish line. Thank you. This event is a real family affair. Why did Rose hold her sister Estide's hand? Because we're sisters and we love each other. That's what we're for. And the reason school board members were here, Erica Whitfield, Barbara McQuinn, and Chuck Shaw at the finish line to hand out medals, and congratulations. To watch the kids come through is something that you just go back away with just a big smile and, and a, give everybody a pat on the back for doing an amazing job. Finishing this race is tough, so what's the secret? I just kept on believing that I can do it. Congrats to all the participants of the 2018 Kids Mile. And after you run a mile, you deserve like some fried cheese or a fried Snickers, right? And three school board members there waiting for you at the finish line. How that sweet was, was that? Great. Yep. Well, the schools of today are so much different than they were when we went to school. We're going to show you how. But first, we acknowledge a local educator who's making a difference in the lives of her students. Carthita Taylor Mann is the daughter of Bell Glade business pioneer W.C. Taylor. She was an educator at Glade Central High School and a Dwyer Award nominee. Her love of culture and literacy ignite a passion for learning. The School District of Palm Beach County honors the contributions of African Americans in our community, our state, and our nation.
Hey, you. Yeah, you. Getting that college education. What are you gonna do? Graduate and take some office job? Be like everybody else. Or will you dare do something different? Like be a teacher. You could be my teacher. You got the skills. The smarts. Yes, you. You could be the teacher I never forget. That would be cool. Does that corporate job even have recess? What are you gonna make of yourself? What are you gonna make of me? Welcome back to Spotlight. From international baccalaureate, dual language, and STEM programs, it's clear the district is offering students a world-class education. It also prepares students for postgraduate success by offering more than 300 choice and career programs and academies. From the arts, to international baccalaureate and gifted programs, to STEM. And I can actually move the planet around. You could see how responsive it is. And advanced placement courses. Palm Beach County Schools provide a world-class education, empowering and preparing today's students for tomorrow's jobs. This program is awesome. I didn't imagine myself when I was little be right here in this classroom and to be able to have the technology, the, the patience, everything, it's been like a dream come true for me. And we're making dreams come true for students throughout the district. We offer more than 300 choice and career academies at more than 120 elementary, middle, and high schools. Not many students in high school get to have this experience. We have a really big shop, a lot of tools. It's a district in which pride prevails. The reason Palm Beach County is your best choice is that we've got a plethora of options, whether it's IB programming, dual language programming, if your student is passionate about culinary or if they want to become a police officer, and I know that there's one pathway that's just right for your student. And we're the highest performing urban school district in the state. I think that Palm Beach County is doing great things in education. That's evidenced by the performance of the students in Palm Beach County. And I think other school districts can learn from the diverse population that exists in Palm Beach County and the great work that's being done here. Our county prides itself on its great cultural diversity. Our students speak more than 150 languages or dialects. I think diversity is important because once you go to college and you enter the real world, you're going to be surrounded by different people that don't have the same mindset or maybe values as you, but you need to learn how to cooperate with them. We also stress cooperation with the environment. Our district recently won the U.S. Department of Education's Green Ribbon Schools District Sustainability Award for our commitment to operating energy efficient schools and educating our students on sustainability. They've got schools reducing their environmental impact, improving health, and teaching environmental education. And it's a really comprehensive district-wide concerted effort in Palm Beach County. The school district of Palm Beach County is the 11th largest in the country, with 180 schools serving approximately 193,000 students. We're ranked among the best school districts in both the state and the nation. These days, there are a lot of choices when it comes to deciding where to get your education, but this district really puts students on the right path to success. The school district of Palm Beach County, your best choice for education. Time now to check out the community calendar. Get ready to lace up your sneakers. It's almost time for the Beach Bash Dash and Breakfast. Join us Saturday, February 24th at Loggerhead Park in Juneau Beach. Find out more at stridesforeducationpbc.org. High school and college students check out Project Yellow Light. It's a national scholarship competition in which you'll be asked to use your creative talents. Learn more about the entries and the deadlines to apply at projectyellowlight.com. Strive 5 for the Hive Run and Walk will take place Sunday, March 11th at the Gardens Mall. Get up to speed on the details at active.com. 
And spring break is not that far off. Students and teachers will be off Monday, March 19th through Friday, March 23rd. Do you have news to share or are you planning an upcoming event? We'd like to know about it. Send us the details at goodnews at palmbeachschools.org. And that's going to do it for this edition of Spotlight on Education, brought to you by the Education Network. Keeping you informed.